to Enchanted Pixies DIY. We're going to be creating Disney themed penny banks. I got a couple penny banks here from two different stores. The coffee one's from the Dollar General for $3.75 and the other two are from the Dollar Tree at $1.25. We're going to start this project off with the coffee one from the Dollar General. First thing we're going to do is remove the back of the penny bank so that way we can get to the letters that are on the inside of the bank. We're going to use some alcohol and an old rag and we're going to cover those letters really good with the alcohol. It will help for the removal process. We are going to then take a box cutter knife and lightly scrape those letters to remove them off of the glass of the bank. You do need to make sure you're scraping lightly because they will cut the glass if not. You do want to keep putting alcohol on it or like I have alcohol still on the rag because you want to keep covering the letters with it to make it come off easily. And I'm going to keep doing this until I have all the letters off all three of the banks. And you're just going to make sure you keep the backs to all three banks because we will be using them in a moment. We're going to move our banks to the side and then you can either print paper out with the designs you want. I got this at Hobby Lobby um, probably a year and a half ago and then it does have Disney themed scrapbook paper. So that is what I'm using but you can also make a design and print it out yourself and use it as well. We are going to take the back of the coffee wand or the back of one of your banks and we're going to line it up with where on the scrapbook paper that I'm wanting to be the background of my bank. In this case I'm using Tinkerbell so as you see here I am lining it up and that is where I will draw my lines to cut out the piece that I'm going to be using. And then I just trace around the back of the bank to know exactly the size that will fit in for the back of the bank. And then once I have that traced, I just set it aside until I find the rest of the backs I want for my other two banks. And then I just again measure them up, make them line up, and I trace them, and then I will set it aside. And I do that for all three. Once I have all three of them traced, I pull out my paper cutter. You can also just use scissors and cut on the lines. I'm using my paper cutter so that way I can get a straight line. And I am just going to slice everywhere that I drew a line. I here am just matching it up to make sure that it does fit perfectly on the back piece of that and then it did have some little frays on the edges so that's what you see me picking off there and you can just pick it off and then you can choose to either hot glue those down or you can use double sided tape I use double sided tape so that way it's not permanent and you'll see that in a minute and then you're just going to continue cutting all your paper down for however many banks that you intend on making. Okay, now that I have all of my backgrounds cut, I am just putting double-sided tape on the top and the bottom here, and you will see that I just line the paper up and I press it on there 
where it lines up perfectly. And then I just keep making sure the edges have all those sprays off. And then I have a back that's ready to go and I can now put it into the bank. I noticed here that there are some edges showing a little bit so I am just going to take my scissors and trim those. Um, some You might not have to do this but I did for this bank so I'm just making sure that it's nice and all even and then I will put it into the bank. And now you can add the actual backing to it and then this one is from the Dollar Tree so um, it just has a little spot on the bottom to hold it on and then there we have one of them with the back piece on and then here I am just speeding through the other two And now here they are with all three of the backing. We have the Tinkerbell one, I did a princess crown, and then Pocahontas. Okay, so now we're going over to Cricut and we are going to make a sayings to put on the front of the bank. Here I am using Waltogram. You can download this off the internet onto your computer and you just click the font once you do that and click Waltogram and then you can click on your text and spell what you want. You can use quotes from the movies, songs, um, other quotes and add Disney into it or whatever you would like. In this one I am doing a Pocahontas quote for the Pocahontas bank and I am breaking it up so there you see I have the text uh, clicked and then I click the plus sign on it to add another one and I do this just because I want to be able to line it up myself I don't want it to line up on its own once it's um, printed off and then I as you see you just hold it and plus sign it and it will keep duplicating it for you and then you can just click on it and change the wording and I do that until I get the whole quote that I want and I just keep doing this until I get the quote I want to all the way I want and I just play with it until I like the way it looks <laughs> And then once I have it all the way I like, I'm going to select the whole thing and then I'm going to click on align and then I'm going to align it center horizontally and then it lines it up for me and then I can make any more adjustments that I want. And then I'm going to click on shapes and click a square. And I measured with the ruler how big of the section is that I want to um, use. And in this case, it is a 4 by 2 And I also did right-click it and change, or not right-click that up at the top by um, the color and changed it to a white just so I could see it better. And then also you are going to select the words and bring them to the front so that way the bookmark is in the back. And then I can now resize them to fit on there and then I will know that when they 
the Cricut cuts it, that it cuts it the right size. And then I just mess with it until I get it exactly how I want it on that background of the white square. And then I just keep messing with it until I like it. And then also I wanted to be able to change the length and the width separately. So if you go over to the height and width, you can click the unlock button and then you can control the length and the width of it. And then I just keep messing with it until I get all of the words onto the white rectangle uh the uh, the way i want it just to make sure they all fit because i know that that's the size i need for where i'm putting it at on the bank and then i select it all and align it horizontally again just so i can see it i know it's not going to cut it like that but that's just for my um, vision to see and then i just do that again for all of the banks i change the font for some of them and I just keep lining it up and make sure that if you're doing more than one, that whatever size you're using, that your white square is that size. So that way you know that you're staying in that area. So as you see on here, I do know on the second one, mine is uh, a little off and that's okay. It was, I knew I had more room at the top. It, this was more just to make sure that I stayed in the um, height of it. And then for the third one, as you see, I changed the shape because I knew that I was going to go across the top of it. So I know that the words are going to come off of the white, but that's just to make sure that I am staying within the width. So you just play around with it to make sure that you're in the area that you need it to be. Then I go in and delete the book, the white backing off, and that is because I don't want it to cut that. That was just for my reference. And then I select all of the words from my first quote for my bank, and I change the color um, just so that it will cut separately for each different color. You can leave it all one color and just move it around and cut on one time, but I am cutting mine separately. And these are the colors I'm thinking. So once I do that, I hit the make button. And then I do on the mat, mat, sorry. And then I just adjust it to how I want it to cut. I move it around. It is out of order and that's fine with me because I will put it in the order once it cuts. And I just move them all around until I get it where I like it. And then once I get that, I hit to make it. And once it connects, I pick the paper I'm using and this one, first one, I'm using just premium vinyl. On the other two, I do use the glitter vinyl and then you change it to more so that way it cuts it deeper and all the way through. And then I am just going to weed it out. I, as I'm pulling back the paper, the vinyl, I'm just using my weeding tool to help it weed out easier. And I just do this for the whole thing. As you see here, I am just weeding it all the way through. 
and then I do cut it up into the sections that I'm going to use it and pull out anything else that I need to. And then once I'm done, I'm going to start with the Tinkerbell bank. I put some transfer tape on it. I have to use strong because it is the glitter paper and I just pull it off after I use the squeegee to get it stuck and put the row where I want it on the bank and just add it. And you just do this with all of the sections of the quote that you're putting on there. And you do the same thing for all of the banks. And here I just kind of like to squeegee over it to make sure the letters are on nice and good. I just take a piece of old uh, backing of the vinyl and do that. And here are all three of them with the vinyl put on and they are all done now. I hope that you like them or you create some of your own the way you want. And this is just all of them lined up together. Thank you for watching. Bye.